Okay, here we go. Thank you so much for your interest in bullet journaling for the busy professional. <laughs> this is just my version of bullet journaling, and it may not um, it may not be perfection, um, and it is you know, just a work in progress for me, but I thought I would share and share how I do it. So I've already set up my bullet journal for the week. So this is a bullet journal. You probably can't see, uh, no, you can't see with the resolution, but it has tiny, tiny dots in a grid pattern, which just allows you to make lines, but it makes, allows you to make lines any way you want. So I have, this is my template that I use every week to plan my week. So what I do is I start the week. So you'll see that there's a spot for each day of the week. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, I put Saturday and Sunday together because um, I try not to have too many tasks or appointments on Saturdays and Sundays. And then I have a spot for where I can talk about what I'm going to do next week so that I have that little heads up during the week of what's coming. And then I have a spot for ideas. That's really important for me because I'm a writer, because I'm constantly on a call with somebody and they're saying something that's spawning an idea for me and I need to kind of inobtrusively just write the idea down so I don't lose it. So at the start of, oh, so the other thing I should comment on is um, I have a habit tracker section. This is just sort of keeping my resilience high and, and that's what this is. So at the start of the week, I go through my calendar and I put in all of the appointments. So I may have a meeting with, um, you know, Acme, my favorite client. Um, and so I would put that in. I might have another meeting with, you know, Frank later in the day. And um, I might, and often this is the case on Mondays, I go to the gym and I work with my trainer on Mondays at the gym. Uh, on Tuesday, I might have a, uh, a keynote for a given client. Um, and uh, I might also have, who knows, whatever. I'm just going to put in all of the meetings that I have, all of the appointments that are in my calendar. And what I do know I have on Tuesdays is that's when I have my top class. Um, so I go in and I put in everything for the week, all of the appointments. And then I flip through to my calendar for next week. And I look and I say, you know, next week, for example, I might have an offsite with a given client, um, a two day client with, um, who knows? Um, Pinnacle Corp. That sounds like a good name for a company. And just putting that there reminds me that, oh, right, if I have to do the tech check for that, if I have to make sure the slides are all ready, that just gives me a heads up. So that's what I do at the start of the week. Then what I do, um, I can actually show you um, what's going on. This is my, my calendar from last week. And you can see that most of the circles are filled in and most of the X's are crossed off, but I was supposed to work on my immigration stuff last week and I didn't. So when I'm putting my work together for the week, the other thing I wanna do is say, okay, that um, visa application, uh, I need to put that somewhere, but I know I have a bunch of stuff on Monday and a big keynote on Tuesday. So I'm not actually gonna do that immigration stuff until Wednesday. So when it's a task, you just put a solid dot and I put, you know, work on my E1 visa application. And I put it where uh, I want to have it, where I'm actually going to do it. So that's setting up the week. There may be other things that I wanna put in. On Monday, I know I forgot to send in the XYZ proposal and that's my first priority for Monday morning. Um, so I get all of that filled in and uh, you know today's uh, Monday and that's kind of what my, my calendar looks like for the start of the week. Um, then as I'm going along, so what I was telling you is that the reason I love this so much is that it's really a great way of managing thought load. So what I mean by doing that is often when I'm trying to write and I, I try and write in the mornings, I'll be going along writing and I'll remember something that I have forgotten to do. Um, you know, I, I actually, um, you know, I need to um, um, send email to 
uh, Q1, my client, because they wrote to me and I haven't written back to them. So one of the things that'll happen is while I'm writing, an email will come in. I don't want to process the email at that moment. So I put it on the list to make sure that I don't lose it. The other thing that happens while I'm doing that is I'm writing one article and I get a bit wordy and I go off on a tangent and I realize that, oh, that's actually a totally different article. So that's not a task per se. That's something I'm going to put in ideas. And so I may put in ideas here, like write uh, a post about thought load, for example. And that's just a great place that I can store those random thoughts. When I process my journal on Monday mornings, I pick up last week's random thoughts and actually put them somewhere. So I do have a page at the back of the journal that's my content planning. So I can put it there. So that's the key reason that a bullet journal keeps you kind of sane. So uh, I have a couple options. If, if I have an intrusive thought about something I haven't done or need to do, if it's going to happen between now and Sunday, I just put it straight in. Often I put things that are, you know, sort of personal things. Like I actually know we, we are working on configuring a new dock for the lake and I haven't done that yet. I, I usually put that on a Saturday and Sunday, something personal like that. If it's for next week, I just go ahead and, and put it straight into next week to remember because when I update it for next week, I'll check this list and I can map it forward. The other thing that bullet journals do is if you set up your bullet journal, you can also set up um, an annual that just is a great space to look at what do the months look like? When are the, when are the weeks? How do they play out? So, you know, I put the LinkedIn sprint here in October just to remind me that that was a big thing. But if I had a thought, and actually I am having thoughts because I'm starting to get nervous about my November campaign, which I do the videos every day in November. So I just, uh, I can just put here, you know what, you got to remember to get the November campaign um, set up for LinkedIn. So uh, if it's not for a day during this week and it's not for next week, then you can go ahead and put it straight into um, a page that's really about the month. Then when I'm setting up a new month, I can actually go through and just check that there was anything here. So that's kind of the main thing. So as you go through your day and you finish a task, you, you color it in so that it's clear. Oh, I screwed up the camera there. Sorry about that. Ooh. There we go, sorry about that. So um, as you go through and you complete a task, you can color that in. And so when I see a colored in dot, sometimes it happens where the person postpones, you know, say it's a meeting that um, the person postpones, I just put a little arrow to say that it's been postponed to another time. And if it's a task, then on the task, what I do is I actually, um, I actually cross it out with an X. That's the bullet journal technique when you finish a task. And the best thing, my favorite thing in the whole world is when, and this is why the bullet journal works for me, is because the most rewarding thing for me is when I finish everything on a day and then I can actually go through and I color in this star, which just means I don't need to look at anything that was written on that day it's done. And so when my eye is scanning the bullet journal, it just naturally skips everything there. But sometimes I'll get to Wednesday and I haven't finished Tuesday. And if it doesn't have the colored in star there, I know that I'm still going back to cross off tasks that were on this list. So that's super helpful as well. The key thing is just really anytime there's an intrusive thought, my nattering narrator, I have somewhere to put it. I can put it as a task in this week. I can put it as something for next week. I can go through and say, you know what? It's not for now, but I can put it in November or December. I can jot down a fun idea. And all of that just keeps me calm. The other thing worth saying is the other thing I have to do to manage my anxiety is take care of myself and invest in my resilience. So that's why the habit tracker is here. So the habit tracker has my five resilience habits, which is intermittent fasting, um, uh, getting hydrated, drinking enough water, um, doing an hour of exercise at least five times a week, 
um, reading fiction each day and I count 10 pages of fiction as that's good enough for me and then um, 10 minutes of meditating and so what happens is I tend to meditate in the morning and so one of my satisfying things when I check in in my journal in the morning is I, I color in the meditation box right right when it happens but because I'm not sure if I've finished my fasting till eight o'clock at night I don't feel that until the next morning so in the morning I go through and I go yep good job on the fasting and oh yep you went to the gym good but when you got to the gym you were knackered and you didn't read and i'm not sure you drank enough water and it's great uh, i can show you uh where's last week um last week i did pretty well but you can see the huge hole is i was really off of reading fiction i was just into a book i didn't like so i made the decision yesterday to abandon that book because I know if I go without reading fiction for a long time, it's really not good for me. So I changed books so that I can make sure I have those filled in. Just for me, the other thing I do, oh, I forgot to write the label in here. The other thing I do is meal planning in a family is always um, another source of stress. And so um, before we do the grocery shopping each day or each week, we... Um, we actually put in what's the full week's worth of menus. We're actually having a delicious saffron fish tonight. And, and normally I would fill all of those in so that I know what's coming. And if I get asked what's for dinner, or do we have the right groceries? That's all there. That's just for me. Um, the other thing I forgot to put on here is I always put... Um, I always put a couple of check mark boxes uh, on my bullet journal. I'll put those on the template for you. I use them for two things. So I have been working on an inbox zero strategy to get my inbox down to zero each morning. So once I get my inbox to zero in the morning, I can check that one off. And in October, I'm doing the LinkedIn sprint. So once I've posted my LinkedIn post for the day, I uh, can check that one. I use the check boxes for different things at different times. So for a while, I was trying to use my stand up desk for at least an hour a day as I built up my tolerance and I would check it off for that. You can check it off for anything you want. So that's just a quick introduction to how I use the bullet journal. Um, it is a, a total lifesaver for me. It just really keeps me calm. And you'll see when I started the year, I was trying to keep it all beautiful and like have a theme. These are my themes for the year and, and to set out the months with an inspiring quote. Yeah, as I got into it, it's like, let's be realistic people. Oh, I'm still going in April. That's good. But then now you'll see just page after page after page of these kinds of boring looking pages because, you know, what I really need from this is just to keep me on track. <laughs> so it's not so pretty now. Um, but boy, does it ever help me manage my anxiety. So I'd love your questions. Let me know. Comments. What would you do? What would you put on it? How would you use your check marks? What would you track in your resilience habit trackers? All those things would be great to know and I would love to hear and I'm sure there are lots of ways I could improve my bullet journal. All right, hope this was useful. Thanks so much. Bye.